Travel time is an important concept in hydrology because it describes how long it takes water to travel through the watershed. It should be noted that many times travel time is also called time of concentration or storm duration. So, an introduction. So why is travel time so important? It is because flow or discharge is a function of both volume and time. In addition, rainfall intensity, I, is a function of rainfall depth and time. And finally, duration and rainfall depth can impact flow magnitude. So how can we calculate travel time? We will discuss five different methods that can be used to calculate travel time. The first method is called the velocity method. It says travel time is equal to the watershed length, L, divided by velocity, V. And remember, T sub T is travel time. It should be noted that on occasion a watershed might be subdivided, and thus you may have to sum your total travel times to get the overall travel time of a watershed. The velocity can be calculated using the Manning's equation, where V is a function or is equal to 1.49 divided by N, the hydraulic radius to the 2 thirds power, and S to the 1 half. 1.49 divided by R, N, times R to the 2 thirds is considered the conveyance constant and can be called K. These values can be looked up in tables similar to the one I'm providing right here. This is also located in your note packet. Pause the video and look for this, this handout. Once you know K and the slope of your particular watershed, you can plug it into the above equation to get travel time. It is important to note travel time is usually measured in minutes, so you will need to do conversions. Another way to calculate travel time is based on the graph on figure 3.19 in your textbook. Once you know the slope of your watershed and the various surface types, you can actually determine the overall watershed. For example, if you have a 10% slope and you have um, contours, you can come and see that your velocity is about 1.7 feet per second. You can plug this directly into the travel time equation to calculate the travel time. The next method is referred to as the sheet flow method. It is based for shallow and uniform flow. It has the following assumptions. No local inflow, meaning Water from various locations within the watershed are not entering the system at any time. There's no backwater. If you remember from hydraulics, back backwater occurs when water backs up against a bridge or a culvert or a dam, resulting in a water surface profile such as an M1 or an S1. There's no storage within the system. And the hydraulic radius in the Manning's equation is a function of both the rainfall intensity and the travel time. So using the velocity equation and the Manning's equation, we can set them equal to each other as shown in the equation right here. Next, we can simplify this equation because we know hydraulic radius is equal to I times the travel time. Therefore, the travel time can be written as follows. 0.938 times the quantity watershed length times N divided by I to the 2 thirds, which is rainfall intensity, S to the 1 half, which is watershed slope, all raised to 3 halves power. Note. This requires an iterative process because I, intensity, is a function of time. The following graphic explains what I'm talking about. As you can see, you have 
storm duration on the x-axis, you have rainfall intensity on the y-axis, and you have various frequency storms. In order to calculate the travel time using the sheet flow method, we need to first assume a, flow, a, a travel time or a duration of our storm. So if I'm looking for the 10-year rainfall intensity for a site, for example, I'm going to start by assuming a travel time of 60 minutes. For the 10-year storm, it'll result in an intensity of 2 inches per hour. Now, I'm going to use the equation above to calculate the travel time. It should be noted, if you get 60 minutes, you're done. If you get another value, for example, 90 minutes, you need to redo your calculation based on 90 minutes. So you would come back to this graph, go to 90 minutes, see where it hits the curve, go across, calculate your new intensity, plug it into the equation. We will do examples of this at the end as part of your out-of-class assignment. The next method is the SCS lag method. SCS stands for the Soil Conservation Service. This SCS lag method is a function of watershed length, curve number, and slope. It should be noted that this method is based for overland flow in non-urban watersheds. Again, if you have multiple land uses which is subdivided within your watershed, you can sum this equation. The LA County has its own method. It looks as follows. It will not test you on this method, but I would like you to be aware of it because many of you may work on projects within LA County and this, it has its own unique equation. It should be noted that LA County has a website that offers a free program for calculating travel time. I is rainfall intensity, L is watershed length, S is slope, and CD describes the soil and the land use characteristics. No, as I mentioned previously, to calculate the overall travel time for your watershed, you will need to sum all the sub all the sub values within the watershed so for example if your watershed was subdivided into two areas as shown here one and two you will have two different values in here to create the total travel time the next method is based on a nomograph this is seldom used, but in Orange County, San Bernardino County, they use this method to calculate the initial travel time for a specific sub-area. The way it works is you calculate the length of your initial watershed. Then you determine what the elevation difference is, and you create a straight line. Based on that, you would get the travel time for a single family development. If you have a different type of development, you would take that point that you calculated with the straight line and look at this location and create a new line based on what your land use is and take it back to your travel time. This is your corrected travel time based on the nomograph method. For class, I would like you to practice the travel time based on the sheet flow. We will do additional worksheets in class to help solidify your understanding of travel time. So based on the sheet flow equation, which was part B, I'd like you to determine the travel time for a five-year storm event. If you're given a watershed that's 1,500 feet long and a slope of 0 0.01, the roughness of the site is 0 0.05. I'm providing you the IDF curve attached to this video in Blackboard for you to use as the IDF curve to determine the rainfall intensity that goes into the equation. If you have any questions, please send me an email and I will get back to you as soon as possible.